What's up guys, CP Modder here, back with another installment of our PC tech support series, which is a series of video answering more technical questions that I do see here on the channel, or that I am do asked, well, on Instagram, Twitter, or wherever else people decide to message me, or really just even in person. Some more technical questions, rather than what we'd go ahead and answer on our Q&A videos. For instance, specific laptop questions, or desktop questions, or something like that. Whilst it may not be a question you have right now, I can definitely say, um, even for me looking at this, some of these questions they would be really handy to just sort of have in the back of your mind especially if you are the person that people come to when it comes to getting computers fixed. So with that being said let's get started with our PC tech support questions. And the first one that we do have here today is how can I find out why my laptop won't boot? Now I'm guessing you've already gone down the line of tracking in a different SSD or maybe you don't have that much stuff on hand. A lot of the time, uh, laptops do all have built-in diagnostics tool. Well, at least on the PC side, Macs don't exactly, but that's a whole nother story. So um, a lot of these tools can just be accessed straight through the BIOS, and these tests will test everything from speakers and even keyboard backlighting on some laptops through to CPUs, GPUs, motherboards, um, everything basically inside of the laptop will be tested by these tools. Now, yes, manufacturer to manufacturer, things will change slightly. Some manufacturers like Dell have some really, really in-depth testing. There was one that I did on an XPS 15 that took like two hours to do, but it was super thorough. And if there was something wrong with the laptop, it would probably pick it up pretty easily right there. And the best bit is it doesn't rely on something like a Windows install or a Linux install to run. It runs basically inside of the BIOS or whatever pre-Windows environment. Anyway, um, so basically it goes ahead and just tests the whole system and that is a great place to start. So uh, if it's a laptop with a sort a not obvious booting issue, the first thing I would do is run the onboard diagnostics. They are not going to be a 100% easy way to go ahead and find the problem, but they are definitely a part and after you go ahead and run these, you can try swapping out some parts if you do find something that might be the issue. Will this CPU work with this motherboard? So if I had a dollar for every time this question was asked to me, especially on my more motherboard videos, um, I could buy like all the Extreme Edition Intel CPUs or all the AMD chips, like literally all the time. But it's a really easy way to answer this particular question. All you really need to do is simply Google the motherboard and then jump onto the support page and boom, it has a list of validated CPUs. With most modern CPUs, just because it's fitting into the socket, it doesn't always mean that it will work on the chipset. On the AMD side, for instance, you may need a BIOS update, whereas for the Intel side, you might just need to have a newer socket and chipset motherboard. So do do your checks, but they're all found over on the website. My PC is running rather hot despite me cleaning it and also to installing a brand new CPU cooler. So for this one, if you've already cleaned it and you've installed a new CPU cooler, from the sounds of it, it kind of sounds like you've got a bad mount on the CPU cooler. There's nothing really wrong with that. Uh, so the easy way to fix it is just loosen everything off and then tighten it back down in a cross type pattern. Um, this has personally happened to me a few times. It's nothing really that much of a problem. Basically, the cooler's just not mounting properly there might be a slight little air gap or just might not have the right pressure on it, um, basically resulting in not the best thermal transfer between the hot CPU and the cooler that's keeping things cool. Um, for me, I found this definitely on some older Corsair water coolers um, where you put it on, everything's tightened down all good, and then you take it off and like half the CPU doesn't even have thermal paste because it didn't even touch. So uh, basically, it's a pretty easy process to go ahead and do, uh, but do keep in mind also too, depending on what your question is for hot. Um, I mean, if you're like 40 degrees under load and you're worrying about that, personally, I wouldn't be too worried. Uh, as much as the internet likes to chase low temperatures, it's not uncommon for CPUs to reach 60 and even 70 degrees Celsius with absolutely no damage. I'd really only be worried if we were up in the 80s and 90 degree range. So simply loosen off the CPU cooler, replace the thermal paste if necessary, but tighten it down in a cross type pattern, and this in theory should fix your problem. But also to check your definition of running hot, uh, because in this particular case, most modern CPUs can hit 60 and 70 degrees no problem, and whilst everyone on the internet is always chasing lower temps, there's nothing really wrong with slightly warmer temps. I would really only be worried if we were up in the 90 degree range. How do I unsend an email? Well. You don't. Unfortunately, once it's sent, 
it gets passed from the mail to the mails through the tubes on the internet, but in, in reality, there's no way to actually get it back, unfortunately. However, there is a way you can prevent this happening in the future, as a lot of mail providers out there do offer like a um, timeout period where when you hit send, it doesn't actually send, it just sits in the, um, well, drafts until it goes ahead and sends out. So whilst you can't unsend an email, if you go ahead and add a delay to your mail service, you can get seconds or even minutes to realize that you've made a mistake and simply just unsend it or get it back. Google has this feature and as far as I can tell, most other mail providers and even mail clients also to offer a similar feature that allows you to push a button to get your mail back before it actually sends out. Why does my USB phone not run at super fast USB speeds when copying to my computer? Most likely because it's not actually running at USB 3. A lot of um, first generation type phones use a USB-C connector, but they're not actually running the USB 3.0 type protocol. They're running just standard USB 2.0. So uh, a number of first generation USB-C phones, even a lot by today, still have USB-C connectors, but the actual pin and protocol that's being used to transfer the data is actually just standard USB 2. Sure, it's going away and a lot of more phones are coming out with USB 3 and USB C, but there's still a lot that are designed for USB 2 because their really main job is for charging with a reversible interface. So the fact that you're seeing slower speeds might not be down to the cable or rather the actual phone, rather just the protocol that's being used. Why did my PC suddenly lose a bunch of FPS in-game, despite me not making any changes? Uh, if this is the case, usually it's going to point to software, whether it be some sort of bug, maybe you installed something or an extra plugin was added that was just using resources. Um, unfortunately, with Windows 10 doing all of its updates left, right and center without us really knowing what's going on, um, it can be just a chance that your computer did a Windows update and something in there is chasing down a little bit of FPS. For instance, I had a computer that was running at about 120 FPS average in most games um, that would just suddenly drop down to 110 FPS after I did a Windows update. Uh, simply rolled back the Windows update, it worked perfectly, went on the internet to see if anyone else was having the problem, no one was having the problem. So chances are here you might just be having a weird little software bug. So I definitely would open up Task Manager and see what's running in the background. I would also to try and roll back any updates that have happened recently to also to try and get it back. But at this uh, being said, also do don't rule out it being a hardware problem. So do some benchmarks and make sure that the hardware is still up on point as well as the software. And there we go, some PC tech support questions that I do get asked rather regularly or in the case of the last one, not so regularly, but is one of those weird ones that come up from time to time. If you have a question, let me know down in that comment section. I would love to give you a hand. Or if you do have a question that gets asked to you all the time, let me know down in that comment section. Guys, thanks all for watching. Okay. Catch you all in the next one.